Now to this. Exercise is good for you, laziness is not. So said the children's TV characters, the Wombles, back in the 70s, was it? But now a new study from Oxford University not only proves that point, but it also suggests there are no limits to keeping fit. Over 90,000 people were studied over five years. It found those that took part in vigorous exercise regularly reduced their risk of heart attacks by more than 50%. Now the study endorses the World Health Organization's recommendations that you should do between two and a half and five hours exercise a week. I'm joined now by Professor Aidan Doherty, Associate Professor at Nuffield Department of Population Health at Oxford University. He's the co-leader of the study. Professor, thank you very much uh, for your time. Just this study, a lot, of, a lot of people over a long period of time, and those tend to be the studies that really deliver really important results. Um, we all know exercise is good for us. The Wombles told us so, but what were the results that surprised you that came out of this study? Um, well, the most surprising uh, result for us was finding that uh, physical activity is probably twice as important as we had previously thought uh, for the prevention of cardiovascular disease. Um, so beforehand, uh, we thought that perhaps uh, those who did the most uh, activity would have around 20% uh, less likely chance of developing a heart attack or a stroke. But in our study, which is a really large study where we've measured people uh, really precisely and exquisitely, uh, we found that those who are most active have something more like around a 50% uh, less uh, chance of having a heart attack or a stroke. So that was perhaps the most uh, surprising finding that physical activity is probably twice as important as we had previously thought for the prevention of cardiovascular disease. Now, how intense must that exercise be? Because my understanding is that study also found that there's actually no limit. Uh, so <laughs> does that mean the harder you exercise, the healthier your heart will be? I mean, is there a point at which you're going to be risking a heart attack or risking doing damage to yourself in some way? Yeah, so, so the, I guess the main message I would like people to take out of this is that uh, the more uh, physical activity you do, uh, and by physical activity, I don't even mean uh, um, doing really hard running up a hill. Um, uh, walking counts as physical activity, going for a brisk walk, and, and the more of uh, those type of moderate activities people can do, the better. So e every move really counts um, for the prevention of cardiovascular disease. Um, uh, so, so that's the main message I'd like people to do. And of course, those who feel able to do uh, more vigorous forms of exercise, that is also good uh, and will have uh, likely have some benefits as well for the prevention of cardiovascular disease. Um, so we'd like people to think every move counts. But what about the fact that you found there are no limits? What do, what do you mean exactly by that? Well, uh, so in our study then of 90,000 people followed up over five years, uh, we looked at all those people uh, and we uh, beforehand we always, uh, there was a suspicion that one could do too much exercise which could actually be harmful but we found no evidence uh, for that in our study. Um, so, so those who are really active, uh, we, we did not uh, find any uh, detrimental effects uh, for that group of people. So, uh, so, so the message we would uh, like to get out there is that, uh, is that more physical activity is better. Is there any chance that your results are skewed by the fact that people who exercise regularly tend to also be people who take general care of their health, avoid bad habits, eat properly, etc.? Um, so that's something uh, that, that we as uh, scientists and epidemiologists uh, need to be very careful of. Um, so we've uh, very carefully then considered people's uh, smoking status, their alcohol uh, consumption, uh, their diets, um, their cholesterol levels, uh, and even after uh, trying to uh, account for all those factors, we still find that uh, physical activity and exercise has got a very uh, striking uh, uh, benefit in association with cardiovascular disease outcomes. You started this study over five years ago, long before any of us had heard of COVID-19. I'm wondering how much more relevant your results are coming out in the middle of a pandemic. Um, so this is... Uh, 
obviously a, a very uh, challenging time uh, for, for lots of people uh, around the world. Um, and I, I realise it might be uh, difficult for people to uh, incorporate uh, more physical activity or exercise uh, into their already busy lives. But for those who feel uh, able and ready to do a, a bit more activity, I, I would hope that the results of our study uh, just gives them that little bit more uh, of motivation and confidence that this is something that's uh, important and worthwhile to do. Yeah, and where do you start? I mean, what's the, what's, is there any, did your study reveal which type of exercise is better? Is swimming better than running, for example? So uh, our current study uh, has not uh, answered uh, that particular question, but uh, if but it's well known, for example, in the World Health Organization guidelines that that for example walking is a really good activity to start with for people who might not feel physically able, and really any type of activity that people wish to do really is beneficial, whether it be dancing, gardening. Uh, there are many common activities uh, that that uh, people can do and every move really does count. Well, thank you so much. Uh, really good to hear that there are no limits to exercise, but also very good to know that even a good walk uh, is going to be very, very beneficial. Thank you so much. That was Aidan Doherty, Associate Professor at Nuffield Department of Population Health at Oxford University. And that study has found uh, that exercise is twice as good for you as previously thought, and there are no limits to how much you can do.